Hey there, traders. This is Chris Keen from a Keen Point of View, and this is the Week End Wrap. Let's take a look at what happened this week, and maybe get an idea of what we think we can have uh, shooting on the next week. It's been a volatile week. I mean, as I'm looking right now, it looks like the euro, uh, the euro and euro yen crosses are shooting up once again uh, after bouncing lower again uh, today. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. It was an interesting week because we had a lot of volatility. The euro yen was off the charts with a little bit of job owning out of uh, Japan from the BOJ. Uh, we saw the pair test the 120 level and then fall right back down below. We also had the Great Britain pound a break below our key resistance. 160 price level and it has been at a free fall ever since. Now, the, uh, to end the week, the Aussie and New Zealand are sitting right, right at, sitting right at the cusp of maybe breaking lower and uh, breaking lower depending on the, the close and then into the beginning of next week. But you have to keep in, keep in mind that Martin Luther King Day is on Monday, so we're going to have a very low volatility in the USA. Uh, and the USD CAD finally broke higher today, and the yen. Uh, <laughs> jumped up and touched the uh, 90 level uh, this week. So let's start off with the EURUSD. This is the simplest and the bo most boring of all the, the the majors with its trading. The pair has just basically been bouncing between 132.50 and 134. If you had been psychic and you knew it was going to do that beforehand, it would have been very good range trading this week. Uh, but other than that, uh, other than that, we're just going to keep a look at what we're going to. Uh, the plan is going to be the next week. We're going to look for a push up towards uh, a push or break below the 132.50 or the 134. If we break above 134, we could see a push uh, up towards the 135 level. But that could probably be a little of a bit of a uh, a chop zone where we're going to have buyers and sellers coming because that's going to mark the 50 fib from the move, uh, the move lower from 150 down to around 120 that occurred last year. Uh, in, it occurred last year. So we're going to have buyers and sellers is pushing there so you're going to have to watch the price action but that will be the immediate resistance if we break towards the 134 and I'd, I would imagine that price will probably be attracted to that level. Now if we break below and we had a push down below the 132.50 level the bottom of the range the first level of resistance would be 131.40 followed by 131. I'm going to believe that the pair might just be we could be in store for a little bit of consolidation right here between the 135 and 134 level in the uh, in the short term. So I'm going to change this to green so I just have a bit of prom parameters here where I can see the range that I'm looking at. And yeah, let's change the top, well, top there on the screen too. And uh, that gives me an idea of uh, where I think the larger range is going to a, a lie. So basically what we're going to watch a new week is the 134 and 132.50 level and see, see if we can get that little bit of uh, Momo from the break of that level or you can just play the range in the inside. The Great Britain USD as the keen traders know we've talked about all week we we're looking for a break of this ascending trend line. It broke below and then it just kind of consolidated, knocked people out and came back to test which always seems to be the case. Quite often when they break these ranges it comes back to test the range and the second time is almost a better time to jump in, jump on board for the push lower and the pair broke below the 160 level and uh, our first initial target is 159.10 and it broke right through that and now we're going to look for a push all the way down to the bottom of this range here around the 158.20 level. This 158.20 level is uh, is the uh, bottom of the range that goes back for the last few months and it was a low that was touched around the 14th of last month so we're going to watch the price action there at those le at those levels if we break below that more importantly though we could get it pushed down towards the 50 fib uh, which was the uh, comes in around 157.38 and that's from the entire range at 163 all the way down to 152.75 so this is going to create a nice little congestion zone right there let's see how we'll, we'll mark it up here for us because I'm I'll probably put these charts on the blog uh, in the blog for everybody so everybody can get a look at it. Um, so that's going to make a nice little congestion zone right there. And uh, what the pair does at these levels is going to be telling about what it's going to do in the future. If we break below this congestion zone, then we could easily be back on track if we're back on track for a push higher by a break of the FIB zone all the way down to the 154 level. That would be the new zone range, let's just say. For example, like when we broke above the range here, we moved back up to the top of that range. And uh, new range that I would be watching in the short term. So basically um, this is going to be key and we're going to watch the 158.20, 157.83 level heading into the new week. If we get a break above the 150, a hold of close, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. 159.10 because the pound is continuing the fall. The 159.10 we get a push back up to 160 we can see a push lower but if we do eventually break above 160 we're right back in that range. It's like nothing ever happened. The Aussie USD is struggling to 
get some footing above 105. Closed before the bear has basically been in a tra training range between 105 and 106 for the last uh, since the, since basically the last few weeks. And uh, it, the the cross broke below this trend line that had been holding the pair, but it really couldn't gather any momentum from that break. And uh, now the pair is going to uh, if we get a close below the 105 level, we could see that the cross. Um, cross could start to cycle lower and the first level of resistance is not, isn't that far lower it's going to be right here around 104.66 um, but more importantly a break below this level does open up the chair to uh, push lower towards the uh, 103.50 level over the coming coming weeks and we could see the range basically being between 106 and 103 over the short term because the pair does not appear the volatility has gone down significantly in this level where I think like the average volatility per day per, uh, for the last week was around 55 or just uh, the beginning of last year was up in the hundreds. So this pair has settled down and has come comfortable. Now you could take this lack of volatility as an indication of bigger, more aggressive moves to come. And uh, that could be the case where the pair did drop significantly after the Chinese GDP. There is in interesting correlations about a rising, a rising yen, or I guess a weakening yen, and a weakening... Um, weakening Aussie where they mostly uh, trade uh, side by side or with uh, the GDP out of uh, China so we're going to see how this pair trades and that, that Ascending trend line and top of price at 83. It broke obviously above that. So what we're going to be is watching this pair to see what, what kind of what kind of action we get if we get a push down towards this trend, uh, this ascending trend line. If we get a bounce, I would look for a move higher and take some like definitely move the break in and take take some of the stops off and to see if we get a break break through that. Uh, but if we do break lower, we have the first resistance here support. Excuse me at 81. Now if the uh, Aussie breaks down, then New Zealand is probably going to follow follow uh, follow its uh, follow it step to step so we'll look for a break of the uh, 83 level to see what kind of action we get there now the CAD this one this has been the exciting trade of the day this pair had lulled me to sleep I didn't even really almost look at it very much anymore but you can see that the cross broke um, broke above the 9880 level and has uh, moved higher all the way back up to the 9940 level and uh, we all know that the 9940 level uh, is significant in between the 9940 and 9970 level this is another consolidation zone we have them all over the place today and uh, we get a break or hold that's going to be the key you get a break or hold of these levels that's going to give us an idea of what's going down if we get a break above this consolidation zone 9970 guess what comes back into play 1.004 anybody or any keen traders you know that that level has been sitting out there forever the pair has been uh going up to it, testing it, back and forth, pushing back, you know, oh, checking everything out. And you can see currently we're basically in a range. We're in a range between 104 and 98.25. And if we get a break above this 99.70, expect to move up to 104.40, hold back down here, we can end up back down to 98.25. Now a break between the 1.004 level, that will be significant because that level has kite price action for some time. The yen has just been snaking higher. And the only thing to do in this pair really is to uh, uh, ride a snake, uh, quote Jim Morrison there. Then you can see that the uh, pair um, higher highs, lower lows, just continuing to move up. We can draw trend lines from that, from the t from the from the, from the uh, further land of the more aggressive trend line here. And what we could do is you can look for a move up to this trend line. You can go along, put your stop slightly below this one, and look for bounces higher. But the way I would trade this is I would look for we have a higher high here. If we get a pullback, look for a pullback that'll come up to basically the 50. 5.618 fib there's a good chance that buyers could re-emerge there and we can continue the crawl higher riding the snake now this isn't going to go on forever consolidation or a pullback is going to have to be in the cards but we'll have to watch and we'll have to watch for a lower low and a break of the existing trend lines for me to change my bias the last pair we're going to look at is the euro jpy and this pair has been uh interesting interesting to watch trade and that strong resistance um 
strong resistance at the end of last week around the one uh, around the one uh, 115 level and it broke right through that to start uh, even before the week started this week and it was all the way up towards the 120 level and now this week with uh, job owning out of China you can see it's bounced back and forth I thought we had strong resistance here at 120 but it broke to 12070 just to break all those all, just to make sure all the shorts uh, close out all the uh, close out all the stops on the shorts I bet but this isn't a, what happened purely technical actually in aspects you can see this from here to here to this pullback here was exactly the 50 fib and that 50 fib level is where it bounced higher so we're going to have to watch on this pullback to see if we break if we break this lower low we could have a reversal of trend and we could have some profit taking breaking if we took a fib level from the move higher base basically most recent one i think a 50 fib is going to come in right around 115 and that would be the level we'd be looking at to maybe see a bounce back so if we see a so the price action in we're going to move lower. I wouldn't mind uh, going short, looking for a push down to 115 in this pair, but we'll have, can't, we'll have to watch the price action. Everybody have a great weekend. If you want to sign up uh, next week to get the daily reports and uh, get a look at our one-minute trading plans on most of the majors that we put out every day, uh, at least uh, update every day, and uh, get a look at the Keen feed and Twitter feed. We can see our trades. I scalp the markets between 7.30 and about 2 Eastern time every day, and then we have the swing trades going also. All right, everybody. Oh, first, week's first week can get for free so it's worth a shot uh everybody uh have a great weekend keep your trades keen and play clean